Okay. Now this allows us to move along to some of the basic single period choice problems. Uh, what's nice about these problems is it allows you to be fairly effective in a business context, knowing relatively little. Um, you are also going to be valuable on a budget committee because it allows you to ask some fairly sophisticated questions. One of the questions you can ask about is break even. What you're looking for here is you try to find the volume index, or rather, the volume such that net benefits are zero. That's what we've defined as being the volume index. So what you can think about it as is you're trying to find Q such that total revenue is just going to be equal to the total cost. So that's what we're looking for at the volume index. We're trying to locate these things. Uh, best example I have is actually, for the most part, a real-life example. Um, and this comes from a, a graduate student of mine that I have now, doing rather well. His name is Saran Mirthabar. And what he did is that he ended up going down to the San Antonio Riverwalk. And he came across a guy that was operating a sunglass uh, little cart that was out there on the walk. And Sarang, being the kind of guy that he was, uh, went up, started a conversation with the guy, and started to collect a little bit of information about his business while he was there. One of the pieces of information that Sarang collected from the guy was that he was actually charged $5,000 a month for his space there on the Riverwalk. And so I expressed that as a fixed cost that's right there. Okay. Period cost when the volume index changes. And so he's charged $5,000 no matter how many pairs of sunglasses he goes ahead and sells. Well, the other thing that you can know about is knowing about the variable cost associated with the sunglasses. And if any of you have ever priced out um, wholesale sunglasses as counterfeit as possible, you know that these things probably cost you at most 10 bucks each. And so I've expressed the variable cost in terms of the quantity, which we always do. And that number right there is average variable cost. That's that alpha that we've been talking about before. And so that's a variable cost measure that we have there. Now, those of you who have ever gone ahead and tried to sell things to people with significant amounts of money, you know, it's pretty difficult to sell them something at a low price rather than as a high price because for some reason people with a lot of money visualize higher prices as being indicative of quality. So you can sell them the same sunglasses, but you'll never sell them to them for 20 bucks. It's always best to try to sell them sunglasses for something that's a little bit more than $20. I'm going to suggest the price, uh, something along the lines of $120. And so what we have here is the ability to calculate what volume you have to sell per month, how many sunglasses per month in order to make it so that the revenue equal to the cost you incurred. So we're going to go ahead and take that price, which is $120. You're going to multiply it by the quantity. There's your total revenue that's right there. And on the other side of the equal sign, what we're going to put is our fixed cost, which is $5,000 a month, and your variable cost that's right there, which is going to be $10 times that quantity that we're actually selling. Now we're going to do a little bit of algebra right here. And uh, we'll go ahead and take the $120 and we'll subtract 10. So we end up with 110Q over here and 5,000 right over here. And we're going to solve for Q, the volume index right there, as being 5,000 divided by 110. And, and since you're not here, I'm going to have to go ahead and do this math all by myself, which is a really, really, really strange thing for me to have to do here. But let's take it as 5,000. And divide by 110. And it turns out to be 45.45. In other words, in order to break even, make it so that the total revenue is equal to total cost. The guy only has to sell about 45 pairs of sunglasses per month. In other words, he's got to pay himself a pair and a half per day. Should this guy worry about this at all? 
No. He's very likely to sell at least a pair and a half per day. The rest of the story goes on where Sarayan interviews the gentleman and he said, no, 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 don't worry about me. I pull $120,000 a year out of this place and points over to the BMW that he has sitting over in the corner and says, that's what I pay for with this stuff over here. And again, remembering, this guy only works a short season. It's not supposedly even an entire year. But there's an example of break even. And when you get numbers that are that small, you know that you don't have to worry about things. You can go back to sleep. And that's what I mean about the break even kind of problem. All right, so another break real fast. <clears throat> 